So the last significant deviation from reality in the film is that it buttons up the rescue nicely at the end and makes it seem much easier than it was. It's true that Nando Parado rode along in one of two Chilean Air Force helicopters to help locate the survivors. The flight through the mountains was extremely rough, and at one point the pilot of Nando's helicopter asked his crew, except for Nando, if they wanted to continue. Nando instructed the pilot, but the pilot didn't believe that Nando knew where he was or that he could find his way back to the glacier. The pilot didn't believe Nando until they were almost right over the fuselage and he could see it for himself. In the Society of the Snow movie, the 14 remaining Andes crash survivors are all rescued at once. However, in real life, due to the high altitude, bad weather, and the helicopter's weight limits, only six survivors were rescued that first day on December 22, 1972. Four medics and rescuers stayed behind to care for the remaining eight, who were rescued the following day. It's unclear why the filmmakers didn't depict the rescue accurately, other than it would have added to the film's already lengthy two hour and 24 minute runtime. The reunions on the ground and their time in the hospital appear to be in line with the Society of the Snow true story. Something to look out for, there are at least two survivor cameos toward the end of the film. Survivor Carlitos Paez has a cameo portraying his own father in the movie. He first can be seen reading off the survivor names in the film, and then he later appears in the scene when the helicopters are landing, and he's waiting for his son, portrayed by actor Felipe Gonzalez Antano, to get off the helicopter. Survivor Roberto Canessa also has a cameo at the end of the film. He can be seen in one of the hospital scenes, standing behind the actor who portrays him, Matthias Recult. On an interesting side note, survivor Roberto Canessa did go on to become a doctor in real life. He is a pediatric cardiologist. Something that could perhaps be seen as an error of omission in the film is that it leaves out much of what happened in the immediate aftermath of the rescue, including the fact that for several days they were hesitant to explain how they survived. At first, they told reporters that they stayed alive by eating packaged food and cheese before turning to local vegetation. In reality, there was none. On December 26, 1972, three days after the final group of survivors were rescued, two pictures of a half-eaten human leg were published on the front page of two newspapers in Chile which reported that the crash survivors had turned to cannibalism to survive. Two days later, the Andes crash survivors had a press conference to discuss their experience, including what they did to survive. Public opinion was initially harsh on them, but when they explained that they had made a pact to give their flesh to the others if they died, the criticism somewhat subsided. The story eventually became known as the Miracle of the Andes and was seen in a positive light. I hope that gives you some insight into how Society of the Snow's ending differs from the true story. To learn more about the historical accuracy of the film, check out our video, Society of the Snow, History vs. Hollywood. Also, check out our article of the same name over on historyvshollywood.com. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Anchors away, my friends.